Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the complex analysis. Today I will explain you how you can learn the concept of Liouville's theorem. Myself Dr. Harishkar, you can follow and subscribe my YouTube channel where you can find the playlist of the complex analysis. In this playlist you can see the theory lectures start from the scratch to the upper level such as the Cauchy Riemann modulus and argument polar form harmonic functions Cauchy integral formula Morera theorem Cauchy inequality and many more lecture in this playlist you can follow subscribe my youtube channel for easy learning of the mathematics concept now what we have discussed so far we have learned the concept that if your function is analytic then its all derivatives are also analytic Apart from that, we also learn that whenever you you can find if you are interested to find find the bound on these analytic functions, then we can use the Cauchy inequality theorem. All both these lectures are available in this playlist. You can see the derivative of the analytic functions and the Cauchy inequality. Now, now the question arises is whenever you have the analytic functions and bounded, you can see the function is analytic and bounded then can you say the function is my constant can you say the function is constant that's a very big question arises here can you say the function is a constant if yes then it is fine if no then under what conditions we can say the function is a constant and that's is a most important concept of course, you can make a constant functions and the answer of this problem is given in the today's lecture named as Liouville's theorem. But before I directly give you the Liouville's theorem, let me quickly give you one more concept that is very helpful to understand the concept of the Liouville's theorem. So before that, I hope you can like and comment on this video as well. Now the second question arises here. If you have the function f of z, when you can say this function is my analytic fine when you can say the function is analytic when it has no singularities fine if the function has no singularity singularity then you can say it has analytic or you can say the function is analytic in the domain where it has no singularities for example if i say the function is z plus one so you can see this function is differentiable everywhere. So that means this function is analytic for all those values of the z in the complex plane. On the other hand, if I consider the function is 1 over z plus 1, then this function is analytic for all those values of the z in the complex plane apart from the singularity. Singularity is my minus 1. So that means the function, this is analytic, all those z apart from the singularity minus 1. Similarly, 1 over z minus 1, this is the function is analytic, but the domain is c minus 1. 1 over z square plus 1. Yes, this function is analytic for all those values of the z in the c minus, what is the singularity of this case? Plus minus iota. Similarly, can you find the singularity of this part? How you can find the singularity? You can put the denominator term to be 0. So can you factor them? So clearly say the factor is my z plus 2, z plus 3. So therefore singularities are my minus 2 and 3. So this function is analytic. All those z which belongs to the C minus of the domain. Fine. Now, now can, can you find a complex valued function f of z can you find a complex value function f of z which are analytic on the complete c like yes of course you can of course you, you can like of the z plus one which is analytic over the complete c fine but apart from the polynomial can you find a function which is analytic on the complete c fine apart from the polynomial or if the polynomial or if such function exists, assume that this function exists, then what we call them? Can we call them analytic function? Can we call as the harmonic function? Can we call as the holomorphic function or what we call them? Fine. And that's the very, very interesting questions for you. 
द आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज गिवन इन द इंटायर फंक्शन द मीनिंग इज इफ सच फंक्शन एग्जिस्ट देन वी कॉल दिस फंक्शन इज माई इंटायर फंक्शन इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज द इंटेगल फंक्शन लाइक वी से एफ ऑफ जेड इज जेड प्लस वन सो वी ऑल नो दिस इज एनालिटिक फॉर ऑल दो कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन सो दैट मीन्स एफ ऑफ जेड इज माई इंटायर फंक्शन now what is the statement of the entire function if the function is analytic in the entire or the every finite region of the z plane then then we can say this is the entire function or we can say if the function is a holomorphic on the entire complex plane holomorphic means differentiable if the function is differentiable on the entire complex plane then you can say this is my entire function and moreover moreover we all knows if the function is differentiable in the entire complex plane then you can write easily in terms of the power series fine and once you know this is their power series and that is converges for the entire complex plane d once it is a converges everywhere can you find the radius of convergence what is the meaning of the radius of convergence if it is converges everywhere then the radius of convergence will be infinity how you can see this is less than r so because it is converges everywhere so it must be infinity then only this value of the z lies in the complete c so the radius of convergence will be infinity there are the several examples like say polynomials exponential trigonometry hyperbolic functions all are the examples of the entire functions like z plus 1 Z square minus three Z plus one over two, or you can say Z square minus Z cube minus Z square plus seven, etc. All are my entire functions. Similarly, for the exponential part, e raised to power Z, e raised to power Z over three, e raised to power four Z, all are my entire functions. While for the trigonometric case, we can consider only as the sine Z and the cos Z are the entire function. tan of z cot of z cosecant secant all are not the entire functions why because if you look about the tan of z i can written as a sin z over cos z the clearly say it has the singularity it has the singularity at all those points at which cos of z is my zero so that means you can see for example pi by 2 Fine. So this function has singularity at z is pi by two, meaning this function is analytic all those points at minus pi by two. Similarly, you can add them as in general it is two n plus one pi by two. Fine. Similarly, for the hyperbolic functions, they are only sine hyperbolic z and cos hyperbolic z. similarly there are the several non analytic non entire functions like 1 over z this function is not analytic for complete domain c because z is equal to 0 is my singularity fine now once we understand the concept of the entire functions then we are able to discuss the answer of this part can we say such function existence when we can say the function is a constant i hope you can subscribe you can like and you can comment on this video as well now the answer of this problem is given by the liouville's theorem what is the condition imposed on that you can see what can additional condition you can impose on that and i can put the additional condition is entire function so that means if my function is entire and bounded then we can say the function is constant any analytic function like you can say the function is analytic plus bounded then it doesn't means that it is a constant you have to put some additional condition on this analytic and that additional condition is function must be entire then only you can say the function is my constant or you can conversely you can say if the function is my non constant fine plus the function is my entire then it doesn't me implies to be the bounded or you can say this function is my unbounded 
fine or you can also say that this definition is always any bounded entire function must be constant like any bounded bounded entire function must be constant the proof is a very very simple i can give the proof within the two lines fine now what is given to you your target is to prove f of z is a constant so what you want to prove for that if i prove that f of dash is my zero then our target will be fulfilled fine now how you can prove that what is given to you as it is given that f is my entire function fine this is given to you that means f is my analytic function fine if f is my analytic function that means nth derivative is also my analytic function and once the nth derivative is my analytic functions the function is my bounded so we can apply the cauchy inequality fine where z0 is the point where z0 is the any point in the complex plane and r is a circle r is a radius of the circle at which z0 is the center and r is the radius of the circle fine now remember that your target is to prove f dash of the z is zero that means you we need the first derivatives so in this equations i can substitute n is my one fine so that will give you the first derivative is m over n factorial is a one over n. now the function is my entire function is my entire that means the radius of the convergence is my infinity fine the radius of convergence is infinity when you can say this radius of the convergence is infinity if you substitute r is my infinity tabhi to hoga if r will be the infinity then this circle is my complete complex plane c that means the function is analytic and the entire so if you take r approaches infinity this value will goes to the zero but we all knows the modulus value can never be zero also your z0 is my arbitrary point fine so that means the first derivative at the point is zero and once the first derivative is my zero that means the function is constant and that's the proof of this result and you can see within the two lines you can easily prove this result but make sure you have to understand the concept of the entire function if you are interested to solve how you can how you can solve the csr net and the gate examination questions related to this same topic then you can watch my lectures available at my youtube channel dr harish garg and you can solve each questions in the 15 second time periods i must recommended you you can watch this lectures and learn this beautiful lectures and definitely your reaction will be look like say smiley face I hope you can enjoy this session too. We will start the power series of the complex variable in the next lecture. Till then, you can share this video, like and comment on this video, and don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel. Thanks for the watchings. Happy learning always. Best wishes.